Hey, 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 y'all. What's going on? Nicole here. And I'm popping on as I said I would every single day. Um, and while I am popping on here, I'm working because when you start doing the hard things, what happens is you start getting so much clarity, especially in the uh, area of time management, that you begin to take advantage of your time. All right, y'all. So, hey, Nicole Cooper here. If you do not know me, I am an online business consultant. I run a digital marketing agency where I help people create courses, membership sites, and digital um, assets that will create passive and leveraged income streams for them. And I am here to share with you um, what's happening with this Do The Hard Things Challenge. All right. So I kicked this thing off, um, I guess, about three or four days ago, and I'm actually documenting this journey. Um, and I'm doing it because so many times we see the glory of someone's story. We see the people when they've already had the success. We see their accomplishments. We see them being super confident because they've been able to get to a place where they're financially comfortable and they have a, a following. And we see the aftermath of someone's hard work. But very few times do we actually get a chance to see the garage process, right? You know, everybody wants to give praise to Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos and all these other wonderful superstar millionaires about their journey to getting where they are. But nobody wants to glorify the process of being in the garage, right? What it takes, how gritty it is, how hard it is, the struggle, the frustration, the distractions, the hardships and all those different things. So I'm in the garage right now, okay? I'm building something, which uh, honestly, a lot of times we try to create this as being a business that we're building, but it really is cha it's, it's pursuing a vision that has been placed in your heart for something you know you were born to build out, right? So whether it is a company or whether it is a nonprofit organization or whether it is a product that you, uh, a software or product or invention or whatever it is, we all have a vision in our heart that we want to pursue and we want to uh, chase after. And so there's a garage season, right? There's a garage season. That season where it's not pretty, it's not sexy, it's not fun, it's not exciting, it's not glamorous, it's not going to hit the front page, it may not be as financially feasible, it's probably hard, you're probably eating beans and rice every day, you're cutting back everywhere around you because your money's going back into that vision. And at the end of the day, nobody talks about this and so sometimes you're second guessing yourself and you're almost wanting to quit and opt out right because you feel like you're way off target and maybe you need to consider going to get a real job or doing something else so that's why i'm actually i'm recording this 90 day journey to share my garage season and to also encourage many of you guys um, to do whatever you got to do to press through your own by doing the hard things all right, so I am officially, today is my day four. I've gone through three days of this, and oh my God, so many things are, are, it's exciting. What I really think is cool is that my kids are getting involved. They're like, mom, it's day four, you know, and they know that I'm gonna be whipping out the camera at every corner, just documenting my day. So I'm literally sitting here now, I'm about to upload um, two videos to YouTube. I actually, um, you guys can see like, this is a true raw process. I'm sitting here now creating my thumbnails, right, of my videos. I had to sit here and, um, I'm, oh, I got to move this. I had to sit here. So I'm just creating some thumbnails to put onto um, my YouTube channel. Uh-oh, it's getting jammed. Um, so I'm putting thumbnails on here now. And as I am putting the thumbnails, I'm going to post these videos up on YouTube. Now, here's the thing. Why did it just do that? Um, I've been having so much tech trouble. So that's another thing to explain to you guys. You know, it's not going to be convenient at all. You see how it just keeps jumping? Something's going on and it's tripping. But I'm uploading videos. Um, I sent out newsletters. Like these are the videos that I've uploaded. Put the content up here, right? Uh, I sent out a newsletter today. So I spent the whole night. Um, that's not it. I spent the whole night last night getting out our company newsletter. 
um, wherever it is. Here we go. Getting out our company newsletter. So if you are on our email list, you should have gotten this. It's not pretty. It's not perfect, but it's done, right? Sitting here now finishing up the sales page. For many of you, you know we're doing a 2020 um, vision uh a 2020 vision um plan and so there got the sales copy here that i had written right like my, my computer look at my look at my thumbnails y'all like it is insane i'm here talking to my team we're going back and forth there goes morgan she's my cto she's working on our sales page right now and she's switching up the colors to get stuff done for our workshop um, you know, there's a lot going on on my computer, wrapping up stuff for clients and the list goes on and on. This is a site that I built for a client and getting her membership site up and running and launched and all that good stuff. So we've been, um, building out her course content and everything in between. And so why am I sharing this with you guys? Um, I'm sharing it with y'all to get you to understand that it's never convenient to create your success. Is never convenient. You know, I personally, um, I'm homeschooling my kids. Today is their last day of classes. They take these, they go to school for homeschoolers. <laughs> Y'all, it is December 3rd. I got these kids for a whole month, right? I got them for a whole month and I got to still build my business. I, I run a digital marketing, content marketing agency. I have multiple clients. I'm running my own company. I have multiple divisions within my company. I'm homeschooling my kids. There's like a lot going on. And I am documenting this whole process to show that it's not convenient. It's not easy. It's hard. I have meltdowns. I have breakdowns. It's very challenging. But one of the things that I've discovered is when you decide to do something, you do what you got to do and you make it happen. So, for example, I stayed up till 2 o'clock this morning um, working on endless projects, right? And now I am uh, working on more stuff for clients, working on stuff for me, launching this workshop. Like, I got right back up. My daughter was up by 6 o'clock. So I had about four hours of sleep last night, but I knew what I had to do. I'm like, okay, we got to get ready for day four. So I already, I spent an hour and a half editing day two's video and I had every tech issue in the book. I couldn't export the video. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. It was all these different tech, technical issues. And it was like, there was no, I'm going to quit or I'll get back to this later. It was no, we're going to figure this out until we get it done because that's what it takes to do the hard things. It's understanding that it's going to be frustrating. Stuff is not going to be smooth. It's not going to work the way you want it to work, but you got to get it done. And when you commit to getting it done, you encounter those hardships, those challenges, the, 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 the few hours of sleep you can squeeze in and you make it happen. And so um, I spent, you guys will see um, the, the day two documentary is coming out. It's like a full documentary because I literally have been documenting every aspect of my day from when I'm getting up in the morning, my hair all over my head, trying to get the kids out and everything. And here's what you're going to realize. Here, here's something that I realized about why many of us are not executors and we're not manifesting our goals. It's because we are locked into excuses and we allow those excuses to hold us back from taking action. So let me let me tell you some of the excuses that I've had all these 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 past couple of months and years and stuff that have held me back. Number one, being embarrassed by I don't have the perfect conditions, right? So we're in temporary housing. We've been relocating to different places. I don't always like the setup. The office ain't always perfect. The backdrop, my hair is not always done or combed. I don't always have makeup on. You know, I don't always feel good about it. It might be clothes, piles of clothes in the background behind me, dishes everywhere. Yes, I don't have granite countertops or marble countertops. I don't have stainless steel appliances right now. I got an old electric stove in a two-bedroom apartment, right? You know, it's tight core. My kids are everywhere. There's so much going on around me that I can let my circumstances say that I can't do this right now because I want to wait till I get in my dream house for people to see my dream life and me living my dream so that they can believe in me. Because if I don't have the big house, nobody's going to believe in me. Listen, here's a beautiful thing about transparency. You know, now uh, different people have different philosophies, right? Different people feel like, well, you got to have all this stuff for people to receive you and accept you or whatever. Let me tell y'all something right now. I got to where I am in all my years of being in the internet and making 
thousands and millions of dollars in different businesses and building audiences and having a following by telling people what I'm doing and taking them on the journey with me and just sharing with them what I have discovered. I didn't get here by positioning myself as an expert. And there, that's the, 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 the myth that a lot of people fall into is, well, I got to be an expert and I got to have this and I should have had made this much money and accomplished this. Guys, it's all about how you approach things. I'm sharing with you guys right now the struggles and the process of building a business and doing the hard things to bring your vision to life. So what goes along with that is showing y'all the reality of this process. And so it doesn't make me feel like I got to go get a big house first with granite countertops or marble countertops or stainless steel appliances or have a 5,000 square foot home to show, do my MTV cribs and with the Bentley in the driveway and the, 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 um, and the Hermes purses and the red box. I ain't got that right now. You know, I shot a video the other day of my closet clothes falling everywhere, hangers breaking. I ain't had nowhere to stand because stuff is everywhere. The closet's small. <laughs> like, I was like, oh my God, right? But that's the reality of being in the garage. And so it's all about knowing where you are and walking in your journey and being willing to share that journey with people. And the people who should be attached to you in that season will find you. If you have to recreate your life, just for people to accept your journey of where you're going, then you're not living your truth. Because if we have to inconvenience, I don't want to say inconvenience, if we have to put our lives at a detriment, um, you know, if I need to go get in more debt right now just to prove to y'all that I can build a business, then there's, there's conflict right there, right? Because that debt is going to work against the vision. And so I have to operate within where I am in this season and allow myself to be transparent about, listen, y'all, this is where we're at, right? We're in the garage. We gave up everything to build something. I walked away from multiple six figures to pursue my vision. I have tons of opportunities around me right now where I can go make a ton of money. I'm not choosing those options. I'm choosing to stay in the vision that God gave me 10 years ago. And I'm choosing to build it out no matter how painful the process is. Because I'm committed to doing this hard thing because I see what's on the other side of this vision. And so today, the lesson, um, as I am embarking on, I, I don't know what I put on here, if I put day three or day four um, of, of doing this whole hard things challenge. But I'm going to be sharing with you guys uh, the documentary of day two and the, 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 the struggle with even trying to stay focused to complete a task. Right. I noticed when we had in our Facebook group, if you haven't joined our Facebook group where we're talking about doing these hard things, I asked everybody to shoot a video and share what their biggest heart, what their hard thing is. And people are like completion, like getting stuff completed without being distracted, staying focused, being able to see something through to the end. And you know what? As adults with children, with spouses and activities and jobs and lives and bills and work and this and that. It is so easy to get pulled away. And so I share, you guys will see the documentary coming out shortly. It's already up. I just got to finish this thumbnail. You guys will see the documentary coming up from day two where it took me, I think it took me from about four or five o'clock in the afternoon to midnight just to map out my plan for this week. And most people will say, oh, we don't take all that. It shouldn't take all that. But because of, and you'll see all the distractions that I dealt with on that day, um, you know, from body being tired to kids being hungry to having obligations like wanting to get to church, right? To um, just a lot of different things. You'll see that this is this is this is normal to have distractions. The key is knowing what the goal is and the outcome is, and staying committed to that process. And so, you know, guys, listen. My office is junky. It's paperwork everywhere. The kids are constantly taking over my space because we're homeschooling. I never feel like I have a sacred space, right? Um, because it's just, it's just we, we have limited space where we are. And so I can sit here and say, well, I don't want people to see the mess in the background. Well, I want to go put makeup on first. Well, I want to go do this. I want to go. Let me tell y'all something. There are days where I'm wearing the same clothes every day. Yes, I do go shower. But if that shirt and them jeans are sitting up there and they not funky and I just sat in my office all day, I might just throw them same uh, pants on and that same shirt on for the day before I, you know, so I can get stuff done. Like that's just the reality of building because right now my goal is time my goal is 
is um, mastering my time and uh, keeping my commitments to myself and to my clients, right? That's my focus right now. So everything else is a luxury, right? Anything, if it's not, if it's not an essential to getting the one core thing done, then guess what? It's just going to be put as a, la a lesser of a priority than everything else. So I just want to share that with you guys. Stay tuned. I'm going to be posting this shortly. I got to take advantage of my time. Got to get on conference calls with clients. Um, I will show you guys this because the video that you guys are going to see today was all about me having this planner. Now, I do have a business plan. We have systems that we use for our team. We have ClickUp that we use for project management. We have, you know, Slack that we use for communications. We have all these tech tools and stuff, but I'm an old school girl. I believe in a pen and a paper and a vision, right? So I'm always writing things down. You guys will see that. So let me show y'all. So in front of me, I have my journal. What does that say? 90 days of doing the hard things so i have what my goals are in front of me so that when the distractions come i'm very clear of what my goals are and finishing these things out right i have my uh journal my weekly planner right here in front of me i use this thing called happy planner okay and i have everything out here uh here for my day right so this is my schedule so if you look at tuesday this is the third right i have my um workout stuff here my purses where i get my personal time and then i have my my meetings and stuff this is my meetings today y'all so i have meetings from 12 1 2 2 30 3 15 and then four o'clock pick up my kids i have a, a workout class at 5 30 boy scouts at seven right and then all this stuff going on for my clients and for myself i have my hard things right this week's hard things these are the things that i absolutely have to get done um, this week. And so this alone, you know, it took me and I have like client work over here and client goals and, 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 you know, household weekly to do's. And then right in front of me, it's like, make sure you get these things done today, right? These are the things that I got to make sure absolutely get done. So I share this with you guys to show you, it took me several hours to plan my week, but once I plan my week, I'm mastering my time and I'm knocking stuff out. Y'all will be surprised what I got done yesterday from how many sales funnels we built to how many courses we created to sales copy that was written to emails that went out to newsletters that was produced to uh, graphics that were created. I mean, like we crank out like massive output in 24 hours what it might take people two three months to get done because we know what needs to be done we have systems in place and you know we just are beasts when it comes to production so it may take me five or six hours to sit down and say all right what's going on for the week let me look at my week let me make sure i understand my appointments let me make sure i understand what's going on but y'all once i know what needs to be done it's a wrap like my clients can call me and be like yo like my client emergency on sunday night my client was like the system broke like we trying to launch something and there was a conflict and immediately we hopped on, built something out, you know, and put all this stuff together so she can get rocking and rolling an hour later. Right. So when you start mastering your time and you understand the beast that you are with the skills that you have um, and you really focus on output, you focus on production and things that, you know, are going to get you to your ultimate goal. What happens is, is those five or six hours of investing the time to get clear on what needs to happen for the week can save you 20 and 30 hours of time. But it also can put you in a position where you're focusing on income producing activities that are going to produce the results that you really want. Most of us cannot keep track of. Most of us um, are struggling with, with sticking things out because we don't know what's important from what's not important because everything in our lives is an emergency, right? And so what this has done for me and what it's going to do for you guys as you're following us in this Do the Hard Things Challenge is that you'll begin to realize that my hard thing is my one main goal, right? That's the one thing that no matter what happens and what's going on around me, it got to get done. So whether you know, there's an emergency with the kids or whether there is a random phone call that's asking for your attention or whether you have to run an unexpected errand or cook dinner or whatever, 
you're going to circle right back around at the end of the day and you get it done. That's what I did yesterday. And y'all will see from my day three documentary, like all the stuff I have to do, y'all. Like I'm taking the kids to Cub Scouts, planning birthday parties, planning holiday parties, planning vacations and all this stuff in between while still running a company and building my own and uh, building my own brand and all that stuff. And so that's what y'all are going to get out of what's happening. I'm going to continue to update y'all. The same video is going to go up on YouTube where I'm keeping track of everything. So if you want to join the Do the Hard Things Challenge, here's the thing. It's all about you doing what's hard for you, right? This is not a, um, there's no requirements. There's no, uh, you know, we don't have a, a formula here of what needs to happen. We do give you guidance on what we recommend you do. And, um, and you choose what's your hard thing. What is it that you want to accomplish, right? So you can join us. I will put the Facebook group below. Um, the link to the Facebook group below, everything is in the Facebook group. You can join us there. And it's designed simply to help build a community where we encourage one another and we hold each other accountable to do whatever is the hard thing for you. All right, I got to wrap this up. I got to go. got to hop on calls. Y'all have a great, awesome, and productive day. And look out for the documentary that should be posted within the next hour or so. All right, y'all. Bye-bye.